Um, so my talk is on uh, data sharing and enhancement. Most of the data I'll be talking about is from Enterprise, which Julie just talked about earlier. Um, slide. Our link Tasmania has 24 data sets totaling 1,063,000 records, all of which are available <coughs> via data.gov.au. Um, an automated process harvests the data from Enterprise on a weekly basis to update these data sets. Uh, the Tasmanian Names Index makes up the majority of the data sets and is used in collaboration with other organisations to enhance the data. Um, I'll do a quick rundown of um, the different data formats we use, um, the difference between open and closed data formats, um, and how we use them. So, <coughs> um, providing data in a proprietary format is sometimes required due to the system requirements. Um, but it's, it's usually preferred to use an open data format um, because if you're using an open data format, there's no, no one owns the um, intellectual property behind that data format, so anyone can write a script, write a program to read that data, to write that data. So you don't need to rely on a vendor or an um, IP owner to maintain their application or maintain their tools. Anyone can look at the standard um, the standard behind an open format, see how it's written, see how it's read, develop their own tools to handle it. Um, this helps with offset, um, format obsolescence. So uh, if you have an open data format and it's 10 years old, you can look at the standard spec and you can write an application to read that data. And it's not too much of an issue because if you had a um, proprietary format that was 10 years old and there was no software around to read it, it would be a bit of an issue. So uh, one of the data formats that we use quite a bit <coughs> is uh, CSV. Um, CSV is a really basic format. Um, it stands for comma separated values. Um, it's mostly thought of as, as uh, spreadsheet data. Um, it's not the same as um, Excel, but it can represent Excel data reasonably well. So here we have an actual CSV file here. Um, the Elements are comma separated, so we have um, an element here, data element here, and each line starts a new row in the, in the table. So here we have what you would see in Excel, and here's once it's saved as CSV. Um, CSV can't store formatting, it can't, so this, um, this blue here, you'll lose that, and you'll lose any um, you know, bolding and stuff like that. Uh, CSV is purely for data in a tabulated form, um, and you can see this cell here is actually empty, therefore we start with a comma because the first cell doesn't contain anything. Um, but here we have yeah, the three, three rows here. Uh, another format we use quite a lot is XML. Um, so XML is a markup language, um, it's extremely flexible and effective at representing complex hierarchical data. So if you have any hierarchical data, um, relational data, many to one, many to many, relations, uh, XML can represent those. Um, CSV and spreadsheets will struggle with those because they're a one-dimensional data source, um, whereas XML can be much more complex. Um, the good thing about XML is uh, you can implement a schema, and a schema in XML basically defines what the data is in the, in the XML data, um, what values, um, what uh, keys you can have, what the data looks like. So if you're developing an application to read a specific type of XML, you'll have an, a schema defined, so then you can uh, develop your program and you'll know exactly what's gonna be in the, in the XML at all times, and you won't have some data in the XML you won't understand because the, the schema defines what's in that XML document. Um, that makes it really good for sharing data because if I have some XML data and it's of X schema, the next organisation already knows what's going to be in there, what type of data is going to be in there, and they can prepare for that data before they receive it. Um, and if everyone's sort of using the same schemas, it makes it really easy to share data. Um, just quickly cover, so here we have um, XML tags here. So we have message, and this slash here means it's the end tag. So this is, um, this basically means that everything in here is contained within message. And inside message we have recipients. So uh, here's starter recipients, end of recipients, and we have um, a person node inside this recipient, and that person is, has the value of Tom. 
So uh, these are the tags and here's the value. Um, if you were to define an XML schema, you would have a primary node which would sit above this that would specify what the schema was, where you could find the schema and to look it up. Um, a lot of the time when you're writing an application, you look for the schema, you'd automatically read the schema. Um, so that's kind of how XML works. Um, JSON format. Um, JSON uh, stands for JavaScript Object Notation, Notation and it's a format that makes uh, life for developers really easy. Um, it's uh, natively supported by a lot of programming languages, which makes it extremely easy to read and to write to. If you're developing an application um, or a script, it's very easy to take some JSON data and just convert it into an object within your programming language and then you can um, basically navigate through that object and pull the data out that you like. So here we have some raw XML, um, raw JSON data. As you can see, it's reasonably hard to read off the screen, but here we have um, sort of the, the primary node here, and then here we have um, a node inside that node. Um, but if you look over here at the graphical representation, it makes it a lot easier to read. So it's easier to take this data and uh, convert it straight into an object, and then you handle it kind of like this. So here we have the primary node, we have a child node, we have another child node with a value. Um, and you can see that uh, you know, there's two elements under here and two elements under here. Uh, so when you're sharing data to someone who's developing a tool or some software, it's really good to give uh, JSON data because it's very easy to develop tools to then use that data. The other thing is um, JSON runs hand in hand with um, a lot of tools like Ajax, which makes it very easy and quick to fetch data off, um, off data sources over the internet. So if you're writing a tool and um, someone's providing some JSON data, you can do a simple Ajax query, pull back that JSON data and utilise it um, straight off their data source. Okay. Um, To make the uh, names index data available on data.gov.au, um, we need to go through a data migration process. So, uh, the, uh, the metadata um, originates in enterprise as DIXML, which is basically just DIXML data with a schema applied. Um, this data is initially taken from enterprise and converted into JSON. Um, it's modified into a modified form, so it's easy to read. So basically, we take the DIXML from enterprise we make it a little bit easier to read, a little bit more intuitive, and we build that into JSON. So we use JSON as our primary data source. Then what we do is we convert JSON to XML and JSON to CSV. Because JSON is very easy to work with, it's really easy to, to then manipulate that JSON into other formats. So um, create the JSON, um, build JSON into XML, and build it into CSV. Um, we also utilise um, data.gov.au's API to automate the uploads of that data to their website. Uh, we do that on a weekly basis. So as data gets enhanced by us, as name index um, grows, once a week, data is automatically harvested out of enterprise, um, built into our data formats, and then automatically uploaded through the API system into data.gov.au. Okay, one of the um, collaborations that we've done with our data is with discovering ANZACs. So we had a chat to um, National Archives um, Discovering ANZACs team and we showed that we had some data that matches their data quite well. So they had a look at our open data via data.gov.au. They saw that their data matches ours somewhat and uh, we went through an automated process to match up some records. And using our World War I photographic records, around about half of our records automatically matched with their records without us having to do any manual work. So what we did is um, we matched up those records and we were able to link between our World War I photographs to their um, soldier records. So what that allowed us to do is add some data into our records to say, 
this person, you can view more about this person by um, discovering Anzacs. And discovering Anzacs also said you can you know, view more information about this um, soldier via um, Link Tasmania. So here we have an example. Uh, soldier, um, World War I soldiers and nurses. Um, this person is uh, in this newspaper here and here. Um, and then we also link back to discovering Anzacs profile. So we go across to that. So this is the discovering Anzacs profile. Um, they have different data to us. So they have, um, you know, the, a lot more different data than we have. So it's an it's a enhancement for us to send our clients off to um, discovering Anzacs so they can collect more data about that soldier. And uh, the other thing is people who are looking at discovering Anzacs can see that this record um, is also on Tasmanian Names Index, so they can see about, you know, this person was in X newspaper and get some more information. Uh, there's another, another collaboration we've done with um, the Prosecutions Project. Uh, so, um, Prosecutions Project, we sent them a bunch of images, a whole couple of series of images based on prosecutions. Uh, these images weren't transcribed. So they were just raw text um, and written text um, images. The prosecution's project then transcribed those records, um, which meant that we didn't have to do it, uh, which worked out really well for us because we could then take that transcribed data and add it into the Tasmanian Names Index. Uh, so because there will be ongoing backwards and forwards um, between us and the prosecution's project around uh, data sharing, we decided to set up an OAI PMH server. So OAI stands for the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Basically, it's a protocol used for fetching and sharing data. So I can go to the OAI PMH server and say, what data have you got that's new for the last week? And I can get all that data, and it comes back to me in XML. So it makes it really easy for me to automate the updating of our records as they update them. Um, we also decided to use DC terms, um, DC stands for Dublin Core, to store the actual metadata. So we know what fields they're going to give us. Um, we already know the Dublin Core fields, so we can determine, we always know what will res return back from this uh, OER PMH call. Here I have a quick diagram of how it works. So digitisation here at Link Tasmania sends images over to the prosecution's project. They transcribe the data into their prosecution's project database. So this sits behind their website. If you're doing a query on the prosecution's project website, the live data sits here. They then built um, an OAI PMH server that looks at this database. Um, then I have an OAI PMH harvesting script that queries this OAI PMH server and says, can you give me all your data? or you know, your new data or whatever I need. Um, I then convert this data into mark data, which Julie showed earlier. That mark data then goes into OMS database. The OMS database goes into the Tasmanian Names Index. So from here, you have this procedure around here, and then this section here is ongoing, um, ongoing harvesting happening here. So what that looks like is you have these two images, SC32, um, series. These two images were sent to the prosecution's project. They transcribed these two records. They found um, John here was in, um, in these images and they wrote some metadata around John. He was stealing sheep um, in uh, 1835. So we create this record um, in our database based on the data that they produced. Um, we can then link to our resources these images to view more, or you can go off to the prosecution's <coughs> project to view their, their data. They may have more data related to our data, being that we share data backwards and forwards. So that's it, nice and short. <laughs> <laughs>